Hello, I'm Bill Yule. During the past year, my experiences confirmed something I've long believed. We need each other, and our connections make us better. We have witnessed many challenges. However, many opportunities are on the horizon. The last time I delivered the State of the City Address, I spoke to you about the challenges and changes the city faced as a result of the National Economic Recession. City Council was forced to make difficult decisions. We cut some city services, reduced the city's workforce, and raised property taxes. The city also made operational and budget changes that helped Alexandria cope with the extreme physical challenges that began in early fiscal year 2009. And city staff quickly adapted, maintaining a high level of service and improving efficiency while making do with less. By the end of the fiscal year 2010, the city ended with a small budget surplus, a bright spot in what has been a very slow economic recovery. How do we get to this place? with a tremendous amount of reflection, sacrifice, sharing, and hard work by everyone. I'd like to thank my colleagues on City Council, Vice Mayor Kerry Donnelly, Councilman Frank Fannin, Councilwoman Alicia Hughes, Councilman Rob Kapika, Councilwoman Del Pepper, and Councilman Paul Smedberg for their dedication and teamwork and seeing Alexander through the economic crisis. I must also thank city employees for their work and commitment. We couldn't have done it without you. And of course, I must thank you, the Alexandria community, for your support and sacrifice during these difficult and challenging times. And now I want to focus on a few key components that are reflective of our strategic plan. In February, City Manager Jim Hartman proposed a $553.4 million fiscal year 2012 general fund operating budget, a budget that included no tax rate increases, no fee increases, and no new cuts to city services. The release of the City Manager's proposed budget is followed by a series of work sessions, public hearings, and discussions. City leaders, with your input, will continue to make careful decisions that will maintain Alexander's financial sustainability in the long term. City Council is scheduled to adopt the budget on May 2nd, and there will be opportunity for public input through public hearings, online comments, or email. To learn how you can get involved, please visit the city's budget website. With this good news about the budget, there's also evidence that the tide is turning slowly in our favor. As of January 31, 2011, our general fund revenues totaled $280.4 million, which is a 2.2% higher than FY 2010 revenues for the same period last year. The national unemployment rate decreased to 9% in December, and Alexander's employment rate as of January 2011 was 4.4%, down from 4.6% in November 2010. Local sales and meals tax revenues improved over last year. Hotel room rental occupancy decreased slightly, but room rates increased. Although national and local commercial construction spending remained sluggish, the number of residential construction projects in Alexandria has returned to fiscal year 2009 levels. By the end of this year, it is anticipated that the value of new multifamily construction will exceed 2010 levels. Despite economic challenges, the city has remained committed to implementing recommendations made a few years ago by the Economic Sustainability Work Group, evident in the development, transit, and waterfront plans you'll hear about later. And more cause for hope, the designation of Alexandria as a distinctive destination by the National Trust for Historic Preservation and the city's commemoration of the Civil War sesquicentennial offers the potential to attract more visitors and spotlight our city as a sought-after place to live, to do business in, and to visit. The city will continue to work with our partners, the Alexandria Convention and Visitors Association, the Alexandria Economic Development Partnership, and the Alexandria Chamber of Commerce to realize these goals. No shortfall and a surplus. It is a cause for hope, a change, and a vision to continue moving forward. Now that we see the light at the end of the tunnel, we cannot rest. We must keep working together as one Alexandria to fulfill our goals and ensure a successful present and future for our city. A present and future built on strong financial management and plans for a sustainable economy and a vibrant city. A quality of life that is unparalleled. A safe, 
healthy, diverse, and inclusive population, housing choices for all income levels, a reliable transportation system with multiple options, job training, workforce development, and support for the human assets we possess, business diversity, collaborative support for our young people and their education, support for our seniors and the strategies for challenges they face, and preservation of our historic and environmental treasures. These goals mirror that of the city's strategic plan, finalized and approved by City Council last year, shaped by extensive discussion and community input. The plan forms a vision for our city and its future direction. Let me tell you about the state of the city and what we're doing to fulfill that vision. When people think about quality of life, one of the first things they may ask is, is our city safe? I'm happy to report that the crime rate in Alexandria remains at a 41-year low. This is remarkable, given that it has been an extremely busy period for our police officers, firefighters, and sheriff deputies as they work to keep our city safe and orderly following the Snowmageddon of 2010 and the August 5th windstorm, fought multiple alarm fires, and provided community education and outreach activities. The commitment of our public safety officers and their commitment to the community is just one example of how the city maintains the safe, excellent standard of living we all enjoy. This year, our fire department received two new state-of-the-art medic units that will be used for the city's peak time medic program, designed to provide additional advanced life support transport capabilities in and around the city when emergency medical service calls are at their highest. This will help reduce emergency response times and lessen the city's reliance on neighboring jurisdictions. New EMS medics who graduated in January will help staff the peak time medic units and other medic vacancies. I'm here at the newly created Department of Emergency Communications, which unifies the former police and fire emergency communications into a single separate department, which will be more effective in providing emergency communication services to the public. For some Alexandrians, quality of life begins with the basics. Within the city, other departmental operations have been streamlined and strengthened as well. The Departments of Mental Health, Intellectual Disabilities, and Substance Abuse, and the Office on Women were merged to form the Department of Community and Human Services. The goal of the merger is to provide services with no wrong door by combining all levels of expertise within a single point of contact for essential services that can measurably improve or maintain the quality of life for Alexandrians in need of department services. The city also merged its Office of Communications and Office of Citizens Assistance into the Office of Communications and Public Information. The new office provides news and information about the city and its services to the public and the media. It also communicates through a variety of platforms, city websites, social media, email, and telephone, so that the public can effectively express their problems, comments, and concerns, and have their issues resolved as quickly as possible by city departments. By combining expertise in communications and media relations with veteran staff experience in working with the public, the Office of Communication and Public Information will provide a higher level of customer service. One of the many great things about our city, it's its diverse neighborhoods. From the colonial homes of Old Town to the pleasant landscapes of Cameron Station and Laconia Hills and the high-rise and multifamily structures of the city's West End, there is something here for everyone. However, housing, in particular affordable housing, has been a key concern in our city. The city has heard those concerns. The mixed income redevelopment of the Glee Park Apartments as Alexandra Crossing now includes market rate homes workforce affordable home ownership units and a resident police officer unit. In addition, the ongoing redevelopment of the James Bland homes as Old Town Commons continues the modernization the city's aging public housing stock. Last year, the city initiated a community process to develop a citywide housing master plan to guide future development with the goals of preserving and enhancing affordable housing opportunities various levels of housing choices for all, community diversity, and economic sustainability. I urge you to visit the city's website to learn more and to follow this process. There's another way you can 
be involved in improving the city's quality of life. Action Alexandria, a project co-sponsored by the city, the Community Foundation ACT, ACT, for Alexandria, the Knight Foundation, and the Braun Morse Foundation, is a community network and website that brings residents and local nonprofit organizations together to identify and prioritize community needs and challenges, and to work together to help solve them. Action Alexandria recently collaborated with the Partnership for a Healthy of Alexandria to host town hall meetings and online voting designed to ask Alexandrians about quality of life indicators like education, food, safety, and housing that mattered most in their lives. By gathering this information, the partnership hopes to begin conversations, forge partnerships, and strengthen collaboration to create a better Alexandria for everyone. Access to the arts and recreation is another measurement of quality of life, and in this, Alexandria is unmatched. There's something for everyone in the spring. Stroll in one of the city's many parks. Spend time with friends and family at one of our free summertime concerts at Market Square or in Fort Ward Park and celebrate the city's birthday at the annual celebration at Orinoco Bay Park. The turning of autumn signals the annual Alexandra Festival of the Arts and the Alexandra Film Festival. And in the winter, you can enjoy wintertime candlelight tours of historic sites and holiday concerts. And our three annual parades bring thousands of visitors into the city. As a lifelong resident of the city of Alexandria, I've always been impressed with our city's recreation facilities, parks, and trails. The city also provides more than 100 classes for Alexandrians of all ages and 40 camps and out-of-school time programs for youth. I also encourage you to take advantage of more than 20 miles of biking and walking trails and more than 950 acres of parkland and tennis and basketball courts throughout this city. Finally, this year marks the beginning of the 150th anniversary commemoration of the Civil War, which will feature special events, exhibitions, and lectures. Become part of the special commemoration by attending some of these events and learning more about the city's Civil War heritage as an occupied city in wartime. In 2010, City Council approved the North Potomac Yard Small Area Plan, and planning for a much-needed new Metro Rail station for the area is underway. The proposed Metro Rail station would be the cornerstone of the plan, which provides for the framework for creating a vibrant mixed-use urban setting in North Potomac Yard, where a big-box shopping center is now located. The plan also calls for pedestrian-friendly streets with local and regional connections for multiple transportation modes, a series of open spaces, residential areas, affordable housing, and retail office space. This new development truly brings the Potomac Yard site full circle. The new Metro Rail Station will serve as a hub of a new transit-oriented community in an area that once served as a railroad yard. The city also received Federal Recovery Act funding to build an exclusive transit way in the median of Route 1 between Monroe Avenue and East Glebe Road, which will provide additional transportation capacity for the area. The Potomac Yard plan is just one of several revitalization plans centered on transit initiatives coming to the city's gateway, including the West End. The Fort Ward Historic Site and Museum on the city's west end is one of Alexandria's historic treasures. Built as a Union Army installation defending the nation's capital, Fort Ward is the best preserved Civil War fort in the Washington, D.C. area. Once again, Alexandria has been chosen to aid in the defense of our nation. As you may know, Mark Center will soon be the new location of the Washington Headquarters Service and a number of other Department of Defense agencies at one of the largest and most visible building sites in the city, known as the Base Realignment and Closure Act or the BRAC 133 Project. This development will bring more than 6,400 employees to the area and with it increase traffic on our already crowded roadways. We recognize the complex transportation challenges BRAC 133 will bring to residents, businesses, and commuters in the area. We've listened to your voices and have made our needs known. So far, the Department of Defense has made substantial improvements in building architecture, and City Council has endorsed a recent proposal by the Virginia Department of Transportation for a direct HOV transit ramp from I-395 into the BRAC 133 area. 
Governor McDonald has pledged $80 million for this project. The city and the BRAC 133 advisory group will continue to work with our state and federal partners in seeing that traffic safety and emergency service concerns are addressed, and we will remain vigilant in voicing your concerns. But transportation is more than just roads and cars. It's also public transit, bicyclists, and pedestrians. It's about continuing our commitment to preserve Alexandria's reputation as a pedestrian and bike-friendly city and provide diverse options for safe and efficient travel throughout the city and the region. The city is currently studying the feasibility of developing three high-capacity transitways in Alexandria one being considered is in the Beauregard-Van Doren corridor and will be part of the overall Beauregard area plan, which aims to revitalize the West End Gateway to the city by increasing the number of travel options to and from the city, preserving community treasures such as the Winkler Preserve, while adding open space and recreational space, increasing access for bicyclists and pedestrians, and increasing connectivity addressing housing choice issues for every income level and household types in conjunction with the city's master housing plan, and promoting economic sustainability by attracting new retail and office development. By offering various transportation options that link our diverse neighborhoods to the rest of the region and promoting quality development throughout the city, we ensure that we keep Alexander moving forward into the future. One of the resources that make Alexandria such a distinctive place is the city's waterfront. Efforts are underway to revitalize and transform the waterfront into a gateway to Alexandria that echoes its heritage as a bustling seaport, a unique place that will enhance the beauty of our shoreline, offer diverse activities, and include public art and historical displays. The city recently released a draft waterfront small area plan and is seeking public review and feedback. Over an 18-month period, the city hosted a variety of public meetings, tours, and discussions that promoted interest in the development of the plan. The result of their work is available on the city's website, and I invite you to review the plan, learn about the process, and get involved in the future of our waterfront. Alexandria is an award-winning eco-city that takes pride in and responsibility for our natural resources. From adopting this nation's second Green Foods Resolution to platinum certification in the Virginia Municipal League's Green Government Challenge, we are committed to preserving our environmental resources for ages to come. That commitment extends to our residents as well. Following the debut of the city's new recycling program last fall, residents recycled an additional 40 tons of material in the first month of operation. In Alexandria City Public Schools, where green ovation and environmental stewardship is now part of the educational culture, recycling rates have also doubled. The city also launched the Green Building Resource Center, a new EcoCity Alexandria initiative offering green building information and resources for homeowners, renters, and businesses designed to help reduce their environmental impact and operating costs. And now, let's talk about another of Alexandria's most precious resources, our youth. Last year, I called on Alexandria's community to work with our schools, educators, and students in changing T.C. Williams' classification as a persistently lowest achieving school by the Virginia Department of Education. The community responded. Here at T.C. Williams High School, the transformation is working and the school is moving from good to great. Since the transformation began, the school has reduced its dropout rates and increased the number of graduates going to college. The T.C. Williams Vision and Action Committee, composed of students, staff members, parents, and community members, helped to guide the transformation. Now, the ongoing transformation efforts are spreading division-wide with focus on high academic achievement for all students, commitment to professional accountability for the success of each student, and forming partnerships with parents and the community as an essential element of individual and overall success for students. The success of this effort shows that it truly does take a village to raise our children, but we cannot rest on these preliminary achievements. For this effort to be successful, we must continue to support our young people. 
Data from the 2010 census shows that young people under the age of 18 make up 17% of the city's population, an increase from 11.3% in 2000. That's nearly 24,000 residents and future leaders of our cities. From infancy to adulthood, these young people need our encouragement and support throughout their lives. The city sponsors and supports many programs and initiatives for youth, from early childhood initiatives to mentoring programs, and your help is needed. Be a champion for Alexander's children. Learn more about how you can get involved by visiting the city's volunteer website. I'd like to say a word about City Manager Jim Hartman, who has resigned and is leaving the city to find new opportunities and challenges. During his six years here, he worked closely with council and city staff to build an outstanding management team. His legacy to the people of Alexandria is a strong government focused on a future that is more accountable, effective, and responsive. He has guided the city through a myriad of crises and has positioned Alexandria as an active participant in the region. On behalf of the City Council and the community, we wish him well. We indeed have a cause for hope in Alexandria. The state of our city is strong. Our goals are ambitious, but the commitment, energy, and perseverance of our residents, which have sustained the city since its founding days, will carry us through. We've seen what can happen when communities come together to make change happen. It's the untold stories that I see in my job as mayor that make that clear. Stories like the community's concerned response to a donation drive for 14 displaced families by a four-alarm fire on Etzel Road on February 15th, and the can-do spirit of residents who, following the August 5th storm, helped friends and neighbors who had lost power and assisted city crews in cleaning up after the storm. It's not surprising that for the third straight year, Alexander residents have been recognized for their generosity and the volume of donations they make to charitable organizations online. It's this spirit that gives us cause for hope, for now and for our future. So, I say thank you. Thank you for your caring, your involvement, and your commitment to Alexandria. You are the mentors, volunteers, commissioners, environmental stewards, friends, neighbors, families, and good citizens who help make our city great. Together, we can continue to succeed in maintaining Alexandria as a safe, vibrant, healthy, and diverse and caring community where every resident can have a voice in moving our city forward. God bless you. God bless the great city of Alexandria. <music>